when I first took over, the motivation was very much financial. My dad could put his kids through university. I can have a family, own a HDB flat, just by being a hawker, so why not? Coffee Break has been at Amoy Street Food Centre since 1999. I'm quite lucky to have something that is heritage and to continue on. Wow, what a spread! So I'm giving birth soon. What is it like as a working mom? Oh, wow. I have two boys. Um, they are now 20 and 16. I've been with the bank for 26 years. I didn't have an easy first pregnancy. I was actually away from work for as long as almost half a year. But I had that support from a group of colleagues who actually saw me through to the smooth delivery of my first pregnancy. And that was something that killed today. It's just something special. You're telling me 20 years ago with DBS, they were already... That level of family orientation is something that is important to us for employees. You need to make sure that there is actually good family balance, well-being of the individuals who work in the bank. We have a very young crew. What do you think attracts them to want to work in a hawker centre? In my parents' and my grandparents' time, it was about making ends meet. So it was like kind of no choice. But with the generation nowadays, the hawker profession is very much, I'd say, a novelty. Oh, it's a novelty for them. Yeah, it's a way for them to express themselves and also contribute back to the Singaporean heritage. We do draw inspiration from the corporate system. Having some career progression or personal development, you would start off as a regular ground staff. And then after that, you start to learn uh, back-end work like uh, administration, stock-taking or end-of-day accounting, training. And then eventually, you manage the store and do some profit-sharing. It's like exactly what you do as well with um, putting them to different positions. In a bank, someone like myself, I was from the consumer business before I moved to HR. So on like a yearly basis, we have at least 10% of our workforce or our colleagues who actually move into different roles. I see you have actually quite a big crew here, yes. which is quite unusual. On a normal, regular day, usually five or four. Really, we need to tackle the flow and the demand. Yeah, no difference from us like a bank, right? Managing the customers, queue, queue wait time, yeah, exactly. having the right number of people to serve the customers. Friday mornings, we have six. And there's usually a long queue for me all the way to the staircase. The pattern that I see is they will treat themselves. So usually, Monday to Thursday, they buy $1.60 normal kopi. Friday, they'll be like, oh, I have $3. So I will treat myself to the mint kopi or the toast. We figured out that with the intent to build and go towards a cashless or digital society, it makes it fun also. It's some kind of like an incentive, a subsidy. Especially after Payla Fridays, we've seen an increase in the older generation trying to learn how to use it just because they want to get that $3. Okay. For us, we take a little bit more time to teach the older folks when they first start out because they're quite afraid of holding up a queue. But once they do... It becomes like a habit. Yes, yes. They will kind of like scoff at the young people who <laughs> pass me cash. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even on non-Fridays, you do see people using Pela just because they're so used to it on Fridays. And then it becomes habit for them. 